Hello everybody, it's Julie here from Creative Little Hut. I am so happy to be here today. I was invited by Sean Petit to take part in this past creative team hop and it's about one stencil, 12 ways. So we've been given each a fall leaf stencil and left to our own devices as to what we want to do with it. So my project is a book. I am going to create a book for October and yeah I'll talk about the giveaway later on in the video but for now what you're seeing is me just going through all the papers that uh, have spoke to me um, while I was rifling through and I just pulled out some, most of them I think are actually tea dyed or they are kind of vintage papers and papers that are just, you know, lying around. And um, so you'll see later on which ones actually make it into the book. I also have, as you see there, some small fabric samples that hopefully might make it in there as well. So I'm just going through and you can see some lovely markings on these music sheets here, which I love so much. And I also have the till tape, the paper till tape, which uh, I might use as well. I also have used the masks from the stencil to make some backgrounds with the jelly plate. And if you're not familiar with the jelly plate, it's a, a silicone plate that you can paint on and do all sorts of things with. So I'd recommend that you look up YouTube, which you're already on, but uh, there's some amazing artists who use the jelly plate in many, many different ways. But to, today I'm just showing you a very simple way to make a background. And that is just adding the masks onto the jelly plate and just pulling a print and then maybe doing a, a block colour on top of it. And there's so many variations I uh, to be able to do this. It's a fantastic tool to have as part of your materials as an artist, as so many possibilities. So that's the block, the block print and I'm just going over so I quite like that and uh, keep going, see what happens. So this is the cover for the book. And I've just used some light cardboard, it's an A3 I think. And in order for me to get just a kind of rough edge and a rough idea of the size, I'm just using this notebook um, to get a, an impression from. And then what I will do is just tear it so that I get those nice rough edges. And that's the extent of the cover. It's really simple to do. But if you're one of those people who like to be more precise, then go ahead and, and make your cover precise. So I've chosen th some of the jelly prints and I've torn most some of the some of the patterns that I like um, that I want to use. So I've just given myself three pieces and stuck them on. And now I'm going in with the stencil. This is the first layer, and I'm really just putting on a kind of base green at the moment in random spots. Uh, no rhyme or reason really about where they go, but I'm, what I try to do is maybe have some leaves sticking out off the edge 
just to you know make it a bit more random and not so placed if you know what I mean So I could probably um, tell you a bit about the giveaway while I'm here. Uh, the giveaway will be announced on the 30th, that's Friday the 30th of October. And you, what you need to do is just leave a comment and Sean will randomly pick people. And you basically you'd have like 12 chances to win a stencil of your choice from Sean's shop. So if you want to do that, then go ahead after this video and go through everyone's videos and leave your name in a comment. So now I have ever placed ever all the leaves where I want them to be. I go back in again once everything's dry uh, with a bit more of a detailed brush and I'm basically just adding some paint over the top of the leaves just to give them a bit more definition. And I'm now going in with a sort of very olivey green and I'm really just filling in the background with a kind of dry brush and I'm not completely covering the cardboard so I just want some of that to peek through and to have some kind of texture around the leaves with the brush. Uh, I'm coming in with a pen, like a felt pen, a green felt pen. Again, it's the tonality of it's quite similar to the background, but enough to be able to see it. And I'm just going in to draw the shapes of the leaves and some of the spaces. Thank you. 
So I'm coming in here now with some coloured pencils and just scribbling away in the background which adds some more texture and also uh, using the pencils just to define the leaves a little bit more and to add the veins to make them pop a bit more. Okay, so that's my cover done. I've added the label and now I'm just going to give you a quick close-up of what it looks like. So I'm starting to add some pockets to the inside cover and that's me just gluing them on. These are kind of, I think they're onion skin dyed papers that I've had for ages and I thought they would make good pockets. I love the patterns on them as well that they make. They might even be coffee dyed as well, I'm not sure. It's been so long since I've actually done them. And I'm just checking there to see, you know, if they make a good pocket. And these two pages are the embossed fern that have the embossed ferns on them. And I'm just putting them together, uh, gluing them together because I'm going to use these as my end papers. And I'm using the paper till roll for that job. So this is a selection of papers that I've chosen for my book slash journal slash sketchbook. It's a bit of a hybrid actually. And then I'm using Edith Holden, good old Edith Holden's book, to have a page in the centre of this journal. And I'm now going in to punch the holes for the binding. So I've sewn these signatures together uh, in the book and I'm really pleased with how it looks but because some of the paper is quite delicate and thin it already needs a bit of repair. This is split here and this has split up here as well but 
that's okay because I don't mind doing some repairs to it and it actually kind of enhances and makes it a wee bit more kind of grunged up if you like so this side's alright it's mostly the pages in the middle that need repaired same here so I will go ahead and just I fix those so I've made the repair or the repairs I'll just show you quickly what I did um, yeah some of these papers are really brittle and uh, what I did was I just put a bandage of paper there and there um, and it just adds a little bit to it I think um, and I put a bit of masking tape along here and a small repair here so and some here as well and I think it's nice and secure now if it, if it does come apart again uh, I'll just patch it up again with you know some other paper or tape and then what leaves to be done now is just to cut down the papers to the size of the cover and I'll be back after I do that I'm just replacing here the masking tape because it wasn't sticking very well and I'm just using the till roll for that so I'm going to replace it with that and glue it in. So I'm really happy now with the book, everything's dry, I've made all the repairs so all that leaves now is to start making the first layers and gluing them in to the book and making a start on these pages. And I've just got everything in front of me and I'm just, as I'm going through the book, I'm just picking up uh, random things if they don't feel right and put the back down and pick something else back up and as you go along you'll start to make some sort of sense out of it all so I will just let you watch the process here as I go along
So I've been working on this little book for a couple of weeks now. This is the front cover and I'd like to take you through it. So I'll take you to my desk behind me here and we shall have a look through together. So here is my book. It's probably about 80% finished. Um, although sometimes I think when you make these journals up they're never quite finished anyway and when you go back to them you can add more elements as you go along. I added some pressed flowers there and um, as I say I wanted to keep that fern, that embossed fern page free. I had this fern from last year that I pressed and I wanted to add that so it sort of related to the front pages there and I've done some little drawings and written about the fern and so I did some stamping as well. This page is really just full of scribbles and kind of leaf shapes. I haven't really done too much to this page. I will go back to it and I've added some a Japanese maple leaf that I have pressed. I've also added some copper leaf that you could see there and some little patches. And also the, a journaling spot there. And this page is about the lovely clear night skies that you can see all the beautiful stars and October is really great for that. And I'm quite lucky where I live because you can see the stars without too much interference from the, the street lights. And this page is really just about the autumn and the shapes of the leaves. So I've stamped some leaves on, I've used another stencil and I've cut out some random shapes in the corner there. And this page is about owls obviously and it's just some random papers that I had. I liked to do this drawing of an owl and uh, I had some journaling to do about that as well. So I quite like this page. That was a, an owl stamp that I had done a long, long time ago and I don't think it even exists anymore. I don't know where it is now. But it's found a, a space, it's found a, a spot in there. And this page is about uh, the jar and a actually pressed some pansies last year and made a print of them. So these are just some random prints that I had. I thought it would be nice to put inside the jar and for a kind of random rainbow to come out of it or in it. I like that idea and there's still plenty of space there for writing on. And there's some elements there from a, a, a video I did for my October diary. This page I've used again uh, an Edith Holden image of the fly agarit mushrooms. I've journaled about that and I've also used Sean's fall, fall leaves again for the background on the left hand side. This page is about the plant honesty and because I love the little papery silver um, discs that this plant gives out, it's just so beautiful. So I brought some home and uh, I made us some paintings from that, which was quite interesting. This page is really just about um, printing the hydrangea leaves onto the, the pages and then there's still plenty of room there for journaling. And this page is the, the centre page. I am a cyclist so I like that little image of the girl on her bike 
and I was on a forage walk recently so that's really I'm kind of journaling about that as well the color palette I love to do I like all the muted pinks and greens of a sort of autumn palette so I've gone through some magazines and and ripped out some shapes of some lovely colors that I've seen and that will get built up over time that was a piece of a uh, odd scrap that I had I just used as a tab and this page here I had been at work one day if you follow me on Instagram you'll know what I'm talking about and I had uh, taken 10 minutes out of my day to draw some borage uh, which is still in bloom at the moment some of it is anyway and some sycamore lee sycamore pods that fall down we call them helicopters I'm not sure what the rest of the world would call them because they kind of twirl round as they fall off the tree and then on the other side I just tore out this piece from a magazine I just loved the muted lavenders and greens and extended the drawing from that as well yes this this calendula here is also in bloom so I was I was working that day as well that's part of the the sheet so I've from the borage so I just basically cut them out and stuck them in there and I quite like that it's nice and I've used the another Japanese maple leaf here and just added that element to the other page and the reference to Winnie the Pooh quite like as well because that's the blustery day and the leaf so I quite like that reference and of course October is also a very wet and windy month and that doesn't really bother me I love all the seasons that we have here and I've just journaled about the weather and I've added some glitteriness to the water this page here is we're all staying home and I'm, I've added some journaling about that and the fact that I suffer from JOMO rather than FOMO which is the joy of missing out and uh, so I just talked about that and also the this girl here um, I've had her for a while and I've just revamped her a little bit she came with this piece of fabric from Christina Romero uh, and because she, she had sent me a sample of her fabric and it had a house on it so I thought that was quite apt for that journal spread And this page here is about just samples or specimens of the honesty and I have added some of the washi tape and a little bit more of the Japanese maple leaf and these are some pressed flowers that I've had lying around for a while that I just wanted to add I quite liked the sort of grunginess of them and this page is about bergamot which is also half of it still in bloom and other half is kind of died back and to me it looks it looks like upside down strawberries so I wanted to journal about that and also the other side of the page is just really some drawings of the shapes of Lovage and Dill which have these amazing umbles I think they're called I should know that but I'm, I'm not sure about that and um, some leaf shapes as well
I added this poem by M.S. Moem onto this spread here and I really like the kind of faded mystical forest in the centre here and how it's sort of um, fading away uh, due to all the decay of autumn and the poems about the falling leaves and things so it's actually really really nice. So that's about it really it just leaves me with putting these leaves into the pocket at the back here and to let you know again of the comments leave your comments and good luck with the, the giveaway don't forget to subscribe to us all and to leave some some lovely thumbs up and um, good luck with everything i hope you have a lovely day and i'll see you again soon bye